Thank you. I, I have to say that we heard from Senator Coons terms that we often hear about children who are brought here through no fault of their own, who have never known another country. And that's why we need a solution like the House bill. The House bill would give a green card, though, to, say, an 18-year-old who arrived here in December. So that's very different than what Senator Coons portrayed or what the Democrats portray that this legislation would do. And that's why this hearing itself is so ill-advised. We have a crisis at the border. Illegal migrant flows that we haven't seen in a generation. The vice president gallivanted around Central America and Mexico last week looking for the root causes. I could have saved the taxpayer the travel expenses. The root causes are right up the street at 1600 Pennsylvania. It's Joe Biden and Kamala Harris running on an open borders campaign, that message being heard across the world, and hundreds of thousands of illegal aliens showing up at our border, not just from Mexico and Guatemala, but literally all across the world to include Europe and Africa and Asia because they know that our borders are open. And as Mr. Edlow testified earlier, the very fact that the United States Senate is having a hearing on granting a massive amnesty under these conditions will simply exacerbate this crisis. It will be used tonight, tonight, by traffickers and smugglers to induce more desperate parents to send their children to our border, to encourage more people from around the world to make that very dangerous trip that will then put even more stress on our border and our law enforcement agencies, lead to more crime in this country, to lower wages and fewer jobs for the American people. So, Mr. Edlow, I'd like to ask a few more questions about this bill that my Democratic colleagues are promoting today. The so-called DREAM Act portion of this bill is falsely portrayed as being focused only on those children, as I mentioned earlier. But isn't it true that the bill allows green cards and citizenship for illegal aliens who entered the United States before January 1, 2021, as long as they were under 19? Yes. So in my hypothetical, an 18-year-old shows up at our border on December 31st and gets in he is just as entitled to a green card under this legislation as some of the witnesses that we have here today and many other of the DACA program recipients who were, in fact, children when they came here and who have, in fact, lived in this country for decades. Seems to me like a very inequitable piece of legislation. Another question, Mr. Edlow. Let me give you another hypothetical. Let's suppose there's a Colombian family of three a married couple and their 13-year-old adult son who also happens to be a gang member. Uh, they heard Joe Biden in the campaign last year. They also began to immigrate here, but they didn't quite make it by December 31st. They arrived in January. So technically, they're not eligible under this legislation. Isn't it true that all they have to do is find two other illegal aliens to attest in a document that they arrived here before January 1, and they also will be eligible for a green well, card. They can certainly the present that as, as the evidence, the documentary in your, evidence. In your long history, in your long history of enforcing our nation immigration laws, have you ever known illegal aliens to commit fraud in an effort to stay in our country? Uh, absolutely. When I was in immigration court, all the time. Shocking. I can't believe that people who have risked everything and spent their life savings to come from places, again, not just Mexico, as far afield as Romania and Bangladesh as have been encountered on our southern border in the last few months, would also be willing to lie on a piece of paper to a federal bureaucrat so they can stay here in this country. Uh, Mr. Edlow, um, isn't it also the case that President Obama's DACA program, um, even if you include all the expansions, uh, never had more than about a million and a half people eligible under its terms? Uh, so, uh, as it's already been said here, we had about 640, 650,000 who are currently enrolled in DACA, and then looking at the Migration Policy Institute, they were estimating somewhere around 1.5 to 1.8 million would have been eligible, but who that, eligible. that's an estimate, yeah. And, and this bill, this bill from the House would not make those 650 to 700,000 
DACA recipients eligible alone. It wouldn't even make those 1.5 to 1.8 million DACA eligible persons um, covered. This bill would allow more than 4 million people to get an amnesty. Isn't that correct, Mr. That, that's correct, Senator. And I would also just quickly point out that the uh, the second part of the, the bill dealing with uh, the Promise Act dealing with TPS uh, right now under the under statute cannot be considered by the United States Senate. Uh, statutory bar under uh, INA 244H requires a supermajority of the Senate to allow any measure that would uh, uh, that would consider uh, adjustments of status or permanent residency for temporary protective status holders to uh, to pass through that supermajority before it can even be considered or brought up on the uh, on the floor of the Senate. So that part of the bill, in my opinion, can't even be brought up at this point. Thank you, Mr. Edlow. Uh, one final point. Ms. Root, I would be remiss if I didn't express my deepest condolences and sympathy for your loss and your family's loss uh, and uh, my great admiration for your courage in appearing here today and speaking out over the years um, for all of the thousands of American city citizens who have been the victims of illegal alien crime. I'm very sorry. Senator Blumenthal.